Welcome to the Matricon Quick Start video for deploying Matricon Data Broker from Azure Marketplace and for configuring it for first time use. To get you up and running as quickly and as easily as possible, this short video will walk you through the four key steps you need to take to get set up and running in less than 15 minutes. The key four areas covered are configuration of the IoT Edge device in the cloud, deploying the Matricon Data Broker container via Azure Marketplace to your on-premises IoT Edge device, configuring Matricon Data Broker security certificates for the first time, and connecting Matricon OPC UA Explorer to Matricon Data Broker so you can start configuring it to work with your shop floor data sources. Before we get started, here are the prerequisites for deploying and running Matricon Data Broker from the Azure Marketplace. Number one, on site, you need an IoT Edge device that is Linux x86 based. The IoT Edge device can be an Edge Gateway, a PC or a server, or a virtual machine. Number two, on Azure Cloud, you need an Azure subscription. If you do not have one, go to portal.azure.com to get one. You also need to register the IoT Edge device you will use with Azure IoT Hub. Instructions for doing this can be found on the Microsoft website. For example, you can use the link below for step-by-step -step instructions in English. Finally, number three, you will need a free Matricon account so you can download Matricon software like Matricon OPC UA Explorer, which is used for Matricon data broker configuration. And now, let's get started. Thanks everyone for uh, joining me in configuration of data broker for remote deployment and management of the data broker from Azure Marketplace. If you go into Azure Marketplace and um, look for uh, Matricon data broker, uh, you will find the Matricon data broker IoT Edge module being available. You can see that it's available as part of the IoT categories. So when you search for the data broker uh, IoT Edge module, you will see this page. Um, as you can see here, there are a few uh, minimum hardware requirements, primarily being Linux operating system of 64-bit, 2 GB of RAM and 500, DB, 500 MB of storage, and uh, only on the x86-64 uh, architecture processors. So uh, you can uh, run this on any of the IoT Edge uh, devices, compatible devices. So the list is provided here. You can pick up a suitable one for meets your, meeting your needs and uh, deploy the uh, Matricon Data Broker IoT Edge module. So how do we start with that? So as soon as, as you are there on this page, you can click on Get It Now. Uh, since I've already logged in, it is not asking me for uh, my Azure account details, but otherwise it will ask, uh, the screen will ask you for your Azure account details. Once you enter your Azure account details, this is Azure account in which your IoT Edge device is already configured and uh, prepared. Okay. Now, once you enter the Azure account details, uh, you will be prompted with this page and you can say continue here. Now it will take you to Azure portal and uh, you have uh, select your uh, account on which you on which your IoT Edge device is running. Welcome to this page. Now you can search for your uh, device on which you want to deploy. You'll find the device here. Say select. Click on create. You can go to review and continue. Uh, before that, uh, you can continue to review and create, but before that, um, I'll show you how to change any of the uh, configuration time parameters. So basically, when you click on the Metricon Data Broker container, uh, here what is listed here, the IoT Edge module, when you click on that, you can see the environment variables. There are a few environment variables which uh, are required for uh, starting the uh, Data Broker container. So you can see here, there is a dispatch name. You can give any dispatch name as, as you prefer. Um, you can leave it as data broker or you can change it to as you want. Uh, the port number, uh, this is important because whatever the port number you are selecting here, 
that port should be opened up on the edge device. So make sure that the port is uh, open for bidirectional communication. And then there are a couple of options like uh, dispatch secure and lock to volume. The recommendation is to not modify them, leave them as options as one. Let's say if you want to change dispatch secure to zero, uh, the uh, what will happen is that you will be able to connect to dispatch OPC your data broker OPC US server um, with none and none security mode, none security mode and anonymous security policy. Okay, and uh, that is that is generally not recommended. So uh, suggestion is to leave it as always as one. Then the other option is uh, dispatch log to volume. Uh, if you do not, if you set it to zero, then all the log files of dispatch container, data broker container will be stored within the data broker containers uh, space. So what does it mean is that whenever the data broker container is destroyed, uh, all the log information is lost. So the recommendation is to uh, log to volume equal to one so that it is stored in a external volume. OK, do not edit anything in the create options and there, there are no configurations with the twin settings. So once you change your, especially your dispatch name and data port and uh, dispatch port uh, to whatever the values you prefer, click on update and then you can go to review and create. You'll be presented with the options what you are selected for and you can say create. Now it will show your uh, data broker edge device. Now you can see here that the data broker edge device is specified in the deployment, but it is not reported by the device yet because it's still getting deployed into the device. Give it a couple of minutes. Within a couple of minutes, the data broker uh, edge device should get deployed into the box, uh, into your edge device. It's still getting deployed. OK, so after uh, giving it a couple of minutes, uh, you can see now that the device is uh, the uh, metric on data broker IoT edge module is deployed. You can see that it is specified in the deployment and is also reported by the device. To reconfirm that, you can go into the device and you can um, run your IoT edge list. And you can see here now that the metric on data broker IOTH module is deployed and it is uh, it's being reported over here. So this completes the remote deployment of the IOTH module data broker uh, uh, IOTH module. Um, now the next step is to connect to that. So um, IOT metric on data broker IOTH module is an OPC US server. It is running as an OPC US server on the IOTH device. What you have, uh, what you have uh, selected. Now uh, you can use any uh, OPC UA clients. Uh, we can use any OPC UA client, let's say like um, Metricon OPC UA client, Metricon OPC UA Explorer. Uh, as you can see, this is the Metricon OPC UA Explorer. Uh, you can say add new server. Let me look for the IP address of my IoT Edge device. My IOD edge device is running on 192.168.236.139. So I'm going to connect to that. So you enter the IP address of the IOD edge device and the port number on which the um, OPC US server, data broker OPC US server is running, which is 59,000. You can search for that. You can, it returns up with the, um, the discovery um, endpoints. You can select any of the endpoints. As you can see here, uh, because I have given the, in the deployment options, I said secure equal to one. The security mode and policy of none and none is not displayed here. That's not available. If at all you select as zero, then the none, none security policy and security mode will be available and you will be able to connect with anonymous authentication. But since we selected with uh, option as one, none and none security mode and policy is not available and you cannot go with anonymous. You'll have to only go with uh, user details. So you can give give any name to the session. Uh, the default username is password. Sorry, the default username is admin and no password. 
click on connect. Since this is a OPC US server and client communication, you can see here that it is not establishing a connection because um, it is expecting that the OPC US Explorer certificate has to be trusted by the data broker uh, OPC US server. So how do we do that? Uh, the deployment time certificate, this is, this is the very first connection being established to the data broker. So that this is basically a deployment time. So for the deployment time, you need to still go into the data broker. Uh, so you can go to the volume of data broker. Um, it is available in uh, this location, CD, where, lab, docker, volumes. You can see there is a volume listed down here, uh, starting with C6. I will go to that location. And then there is a there will be a folder called as data. Under that you can see this is the folder where all the data broker related files are all deployed. OK, now you can go into the PKI folder. Default application group. Uh, you can go to the rejected folder and search folder. You can see here that there is a certificate which has come from OPC UA Explorer. You can see by the name of it metricon underscore opc underscore u underscore explorer now we can move this certificate we have to move this certificate into the trusted folder so what we do is that uh, move um, dot star dot star dot dot slash dot dot slash trusted sets now you can see that The certificate has been moved into here. Now this is the first. This is this has to be done only for the very first uh, any UA client connection, so that uh, you have one session established and you can manage the certificates further on from that particular UA session. So now I can go and make the connection. The connection is established. Now you can. This is where you are. Uh, this is how you connect to the data broker for the very first time. And any future connections, any future time, if you are connecting any new UA server to the data broker. You can always manage the certificates going to the certificate management screen uh, you see here. So we since we have only had one certificate and which is already trusted, it says it is trusted. You can see the details of the certificate by double clicking on it. If you have another certificate which is not trusted, it will show up here saying that is trusted equal to no. You can select the checkbox and say accept the certificate or you can double click the certificate and then accept the certificate from the pop up. Both of them are possible options. So this is how we establish the first connection to the data broker. Um, once you establish the data broker connectivity, uh, the next step is how do we configure the data broker?